Hi, welcome to another video. This, this amazing, no it's not a commode. <laughs> it's an Edistone 358. I don't know whether it's 358X. I've only just been reading up about this. I only got this the other day. Um, it says here B34, receiver B34. It covers, I think, 40 kilohertz to 30 or 31 megs or 32 megs. I'm not quite sure. Um, so there we are. RF gain, audio gain there. BFO. Uh, where's the BFO there? Uh, oh, it's that bandwidth or uh, well selectivity. Um, tone. The speaker. Here we are. There's a transformer in there. It, oh, that's a heavy thing. This weighs a ton. Uh, the speaker's 600 ohms, the, the output for the speaker. That's why the transformer's in there to match it to the 3 ohm speaker. There's a meter which seems to read the anode current on all the valves, uh, which is good. Speaker on off. Um, AGC on and off, I think that one is. There's no band switch, no wave change switch, because what you do is you, <laughs> you open the lid and you plug in coils. Look at that. Goodness me, there's one in there already. So you plug these in and it's written. Actually, the writing is coming off these. This is range something or other, something to 150 kilohertz. And you get... Uh, it's so heavy. Oh, there we are. The one that's missing obviously is in the radio at the moment. So these are the different bands that it covers, different ranges. Um, they all seem to work. Goodness me. Oh, so it's quite a beast. There's the power supply there. I don't know whether that had a cover over it or not. From pictures I've seen on the internet, there are different types of power supplies. Some had covers on it. I don't know. That must have had something over it. So uh, you've got an octal, a lead with an octal plug that goes into the power supply. The mains lead is this old, looks like the lead on an iron, you know, the old cotton covered stuff, so that wants replacing. A um, bit of rust, but uh, this is going to be a, a good restoration project. It, uh, it's got octal valves, I think it's 1941. I read somewhere these were manufactured between 41 and 47 or something. So. Uh, there we are, and as you can see, the tuning, this, is lovely. Look at that. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing. It's a lovely piece of kit. I got this, let's turn it off. Um, chap I worked with in the radio and TV shop uh, when I first started as an apprentice back in the 60s. Uh, this chap worked there. He was, you know, one, one of the engineers there, a few years older than me. Um, anyway, sadly, he passed away suddenly, uh, recently. I hadn't seen him for decades. Um, anyway, it's a long story, but uh, his nephew found me and established that, yes, I was the chap that worked with him. So I got this. He, ga he gave me this. So it's nice to have this, um, uh, not only as part of my uh, ever-growing communication receiver collection but because this belonged to uh, you know my friend and the, the chap I work with in uh, back in the 60s in the workshop um, so yeah it's nice to have something of his so there we are rather nice that is it, it the only trouble is with these things is the weight it, it really is heavy I mean, my back isn't in the best of sort of health anyway and if I start lift it I mean it weighs absolutely weighs a ton uh, I mean, as I said the speaker alone that's a metal box everything was built like a battleship in those days I mean this steel front I mean look at it it's ever so thick thick bit of sheet steel there's a bit of rust coming through really this wants um, it really wants fully restoring like the, the cabinet and the front panel all taking off you know rubbing down sandblasting or whatever and respraying that would look rather nice 
because um, all this will come off of course you know the meter and everything these plates will come off um, I did see a chap on the internet he's put some photos on and uh, it looks like new lovely really nice so there we are I'm after a CR100 a Marconi CR100 not quite as big as this uh, not quite as heavy um, and uh, there's one I'm keeping an eye on in Brighton which is only about what 10 miles east of me so keeping an eye on that collection only I mean you couldn't post anything well I suppose you could <laughs> I don't know so there we are that's the Edistone what is it 358 uh, or B30, B34 used on the ships <coughs> it says here Admiralty pattern so it used on the ships back in the 40s um, I also read somewhere it was something made to made to order or something or or made to private order I can't remember what I read now so anyway if anyone's got any info on it perhaps you let me know any further information just that lid there I mean that, that's what's that that's sort of piece of cast iron <laughs> goodness me it's no wonder it all weighs so much and the coils as I say they plug in the top there um, I mean these alone are heavy yeah the chap that restored his uh, the pictures he took all these apart cleaned it all up these holes here are for aligning you know um, RF mixer oscillator all that sort of thing I think that's yeah that's what these three are there's oscillator uh, mixer and RF stage someone in this one um, when, when I restore this I, I'll you know, make videos of sort of like now during and after restoration I don't know when I'm going to get round to it because it's a lengthy job and I'm very busy with customers repairs but um, I will do it anyway someone's what we used to do on the CR CR100 um, the RF amplifier take out the octal valve which was the RF amp I think in this case it was an EF39 I read somewhere I haven't got the manual on this yet um, then mount a little B9A valve base get an octal valve break the glass off so you end up with just the, the octal plug mount a B9A valve base on that uh, you know wire it through obviously all to the correct pins um, <clears throat> and I'm not sure what this is but someone's done that a B9A valve I think on the CR100 we used was it an EF183 EF184 something like that and you don't need to do any modifications to the circuit at all it just plugs straight in and I do remember uh, I made up this this little contraption you know put my EF184 in it um, and I I had the Marconi somewhere on shortwave listening to a station took the octal valve out put my EF184 in and what a difference RF gain what a difference signals came right up so uh, that was worth doing and of course it doesn't permanently modify anything you know you don't have to remove the octal valve base or anything like that just make an, a neat job as someone's done here that's that's quite a neat job I won't pull that out oh there's the oh yes there, and now in this one there's the top cap that I don't know where that goes someone so of course the yes the EF 39 has got a top cap hasn't it for the grid so yeah there must be a slight you've obviously got to take the a wire from the top cap to one of the pins on the B9A base underneath anyway there we are a nice little modification that doesn't alter anything on you know it can be put back as it was within minutes so that's it don't think there's anything else to say about it I will I'm looking forward to having a look underneath I've seen photos on the internet of underneath um, I want to have a look under there there's uh, yeah as I said the BFO works well anyway waffling now okay thanks for watching I'll uh, keep you updated with more videos as and when I start the restoration project okay bye for now